Hi. Um, name is Ian and uh, originally from the UK, but I uh, came out to Asia, been living in Asia for more than 20 years now. Mm. Um, and we started working on Vula about a year and a half ago mm. when we realized there was a huge opportunity to address the industry that is we're describing as broadcast content. Mm -hmm. So $240 billion a year is spent by broadcasters buying the rights to films and TV shows so that they have the, the right to show it to their audience. And when I say broadcaster, I mean both the free-to-air broadcaster, the pay TV channels, but also the OTTs like Vicky or like uh, Amazon and Netflix. OTT, uh, what is that? Ah, uh, OTT. Okay, so maybe that's a bit of industry jargon. It stands for over the top, and that's a description of how you deliver the video streams. Okay. So instead of delivering it via an antenna, a broadcast antenna, or delivering it via a cable laid into the ground, uh, it's delivered over an internet connection, either broadband into the home, into a laptop, or it could be via 3G or 4G onto a smartphone, and typically into an app, like the Netflix app or the Amazon app, but it can be delivered into a, a browser as well. Um, well, I started off uh, as a tech person um, mm. with uh, Sun Microsystems, actually. Mm. Um, and then I joined uh, Oracle, a database business, applications mm. business. Mm. And <clears throat> I came to Asia running a systems integration business. Mm -hmm. um, but in 2004, I decided to pivot my career. Mm. And I started a business called Volcanic. Okay. Um, it's spelled V-O-C-A-N-I-C. And the V-O-C stood for voice of the customer. Mm -hmm. um, because what I saw sitting in 2004 was that the advent of um, what was soon to come, the smartphone, uh, blogging platforms like Typepad and later on Blogspot and all the rest of them, would mean that consumers would be empowered to share their opinions about the brands they interact with. And that the sum of the voice of the customer being shared across what is now called social media would have a huge impact on how brands would behave, would need to behave, would have to need to, how they did their marketing. Um, we were the pioneers in Asia. We became the largest in mm -hmm. Asia with offices in Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, and Indonesia. And in the end of 2013, I sold that business to WPP. And we integrated it with the media buying business called Group M. And okay. I stayed on for three years to do the integration. And All right. after that, I mm -hmm. came out and started Vula. Well, I started with um, building a marketplace, with the idea of building a marketplace mm -hmm. to connect buyers and sellers of broadcast content. Mm -hmm. um, but when I got into the project, I realized that there were some fundamental problems in the industry mm -hmm. in that they were not ready yet to be able to trade with each other, each other digitally. Yeah. Um, and so I took a step back and uh, looked at how we were approaching that mm. and realized that there needs to be a layer in our solution mm. that looks after all of the data that's needed in a transaction. Yeah. And clearly, you know, when we were assessing that, the blockchain is the ideal platform to manage that. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're, we're looking at. We'll be delivered through the Vila Foundation. will be uh, a supply chain layer Mm -hmm. which will handle a couple of the key aspects of that. First is uh, a unique identifier for each title as a digital video asset. Mm -hmm. The analogy would be like an ISBN number is for a book or a barcode is for a tube of toothpaste. There's a, an allocation, allocating process to ident a unique identifier for that. And we're working for it with a Hollywood Trade Association called IDA, who've developed that process. And we'll be building a decentralized mm. ledger of unique asset identifiers on the Ethereum blockchain. 
The second layer is to do with the metadata. So the metadata is the information that a user sees when they're looking at the screen and deciding what to, what to watch. It's the title, um, it's the poster, it's the synopsis. Mm -hmm. At the moment, mm, it's very hard for broadcasters to get the metadata for the titles they buy. And if you think about a series, many years of series where you need a, a synopsis for every episode, mm -hmm. and uh, if you're a company like Netflix and you operate in 30 or 40 languages, you need all of that information translated into 30 or 40 languages. Okay. Then you understand the scale of the problem. So we're building a solution for that as part of our architecture, which we're calling the metadata refinery. And that's also a distributed ledger, uh, Ethereum based uh, proposition. And the final thing mm -hmm. is about keeping state of the contractual availability for a title. So a title could be a film, it could be a movie show, and you need to know whether that title is available on an exclusive or a non-exclusive basis for a particular geography, for a particular time period, and for a particular right. So for instance, for free to air, or for pay TV, or for SVOD, subscription video on demand. So part of what we're doing yeah. is a B2B business, right? Mm -hmm. So we're connecting the studios and production houses that make TV shows and films, yeah. and we're connecting with broadcasters around the world okay. who need to buy the rights for it. Mm -hmm. But there's a second part to what we're doing, and it's to do with the metadata mm -hmm. where the public can come and get involved. Okay. So the metadata refinery will be a community-powered proposition. Mm -hmm. So think of a, a platform like Wikipedia, mm -hmm. which harnesses the knowledge and power of a community mm -hmm. to collect together, to refine, and to translate information about TV shows and films. Okay. And that's where the, the, the member of the public can, can come in and participate. And everybody likes their favorite film or their favorite TV show. Mm -hmm. And we'll get the opportunity to engage with us and share their knowledge. Okay. And the beauty is that they can be rewarded for doing that. So, <laughs> a bit noisy. Sorry. Um, the, the process will be that uh, by sharing their knowledge, they'll be awarded points in relation to uh, how much they, they mm -hmm. contribute and the quality of their contribution. And those points will translate on a monthly process uh, okay. to a distribution of the profits that Vula will be generating from its marketplace. So we'll be rewarding people for mm -hmm. sharing their knowledge about TV shows and for translating that metadata into their maybe mother tongue, like Korean. Yeah. Okay. Now, token holders mm -hmm. can participate. Um, we'll have a smart contract called the parking lot. And the parking lot allows a token holder to send the tokens to the parking lot. And in return, they're given an accelerator, a multiplier. Mm. This is a, a number which is then applied to the points they earn mm. by participating in our metadata economy. Okay. And so by holding tokens and parking them, you can increase your allocation Mm -hmm. of our profits distributed as rewards for the actions that you take. So it'll be very valuable mm -hmm. for you to hold tokens either earned by making metadata with us mm -hmm. or bought through the ICO and then by participating in our metadata economy, you can increase your distribution. The concept is this. Mm -hmm. that um, you'll be able to deposit your coins in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And depending on how long you commit to leave the coins there for mm -hmm. and how many coins you deposit, obviously the more coins and the longer, you'll be given a bigger accelerator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in terms of the detailed policies mm -hmm. as to whether there will be early withdrawal allowed and what the implications are, we're still developing those ideas. Clearly we understand that people will need access to it, mm -hmm. um, but we need to make sure that we balance the 
the agenda of all of the stakeholders in the ecosystem. Yeah, so we have a roadmap um, for, for our vision. So the, at launch, the process will be relatively straightforward, which is that uh, the buyer will be able to use powerful tools to search and evaluate, watch screeners, check the availability, um, and when they're ready, make an offer to buy the rights from the seller. Mm. And our negotiation model will allow them to do that quickly and efficiently through the platform. But okay. the contractual relationship will be direct between buyer and seller. And as part of that, they'll be able to attach their terms and conditions, conditions, mm. the buyer attaching the, the buyer's terms and conditions, the seller attaching their terms and conditions until they eventually agree on whose terms and conditions to use to cover the contract. So we, Viewla, will not be a party to the transaction. It will be direct between buyer and seller, which is how they do that at the moment. And yeah. that will allow us to scale without the complexity. Mm. Now, we do have a vision for regularizing and creating industry standard templates for those licensing contracts. Mm. And we're working, very happy to be working with a legal counsel for, uh, who's just left the Walt Disney Company who's spearheading our process to try and get industry alignment around that mm -hmm. to simplify the process. Our vision is that once we have industry alignment, we will be able to develop smart contracts to capture the commercial terms mm -hmm. agreed between buyer and seller. And then we'll be in an environment where we have smart contracts managing mm -hmm. the rights to TV and film. There's only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> Night and days, huh? <laughs> That's right. I wish there was 48 in every day, then I could get a lot more done. Well, I think we're very lucky in Singapore. Mm. The, the, the regulator is called the MAS, the Monetary Authority of Singapore. And they have been taking a very posit crypto positive, mm. proactive stance. Oh, yeah. So they have been issuing uh, relatively clear guidance. Yeah. And they've been very supportive of the crypto and blockchain based businesses that have come to Singapore to take advantage of the, the very good climate for it. And they've been very consistent. You know, they've, they've been uh, po crypto positive right from the start without you know, changing their minds. So Singapore has been very consistent mm -hmm. as a, a crypto friendly, blockchain business friendly domicile from mm -hmm. which to run your project. We want to transform the industry. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, you have 35 to 40% of the value yeah. of the content that a filmmaker makes mm -hmm. gets lost to the cost of friction of the transaction. Okay. And we think that more of that value should go back to the people who are making the content. Because okay. that'll give them more resources, make more content, better content. My other objective is that at the moment, distribution is via uh, distributors, a network of distributors, mm. and it kind of behaves a bit like an old boys club. They will only work with people that they know and trust and worked with before. And that means that if you're a young filmmaker or a young uh, production house, you could be making great content, but you'll find it very, very hard to have your content mm. put in front of and pitched to the broadcasters. It makes it very hard to get on the ladder. Yeah. And one of the things that I want to do is to make it a meritocracy mm. so that it doesn't matter whether you come from a big, well-established production house or film studio or whether you're, you know, four kids coming out of film school. Mm. If you've made a, made a great piece of content, I think your content should have every opportunity to be presented and bought.
by broadcasters around the world. My hope there is that we will help the next generation of film directors and actors and scriptwriters to be able to start their career. We, we raised a seed round at the end of last year mm -hmm. um, and uh, had a, a range of very notable investors, <clears throat> including the ex-managing director of the Walt Disney Company has come on board as an investor. Um, we're now in the private round mm -hmm. of our ICO. Um, and information about that is on our website. On the 4th of May, mm -hmm. we will be launching our public crowd sale uh, registration stage that will be open for a week and on the 9th of may we will be starting the actual crowd sale and that will run for two or three weeks so when does it end 30th of may 30th of may yeah, quite a few times already this year uh, we yeah. find it's a, a really interesting uh, economy Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting a lot of interest from Korea, probably I'd say uh, at one of our top uh, locations in terms mm -hmm. of interest. <clears throat> and it's great because not only is it a, a huge crypto economy, mm -hmm. but also um, it's uh, a, a, an economy, a huge media economy that produces lots of great Korean content and Korean drama. Mm -hmm. which is uh, very attractive by to many of the economies around the world. Mm -hmm. So not only do we feel like it's a great place to be, to connect with the crypto community, but also to the content community, the filmmakers and the production houses.